Hello, do you know the fastest way to add $2.47 plus $1.35 plus $6.82 in your head? Keep watching to find out how. Hi, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and you're watching Mental Math Secrets, your secret weapon for success. And today we're going to learn how to add money up rapidly and mentally. And in order to do that, we need to learn how to add up three digits. So in the previous lesson, we learned how to add two digits. And what we're going to do here first before we deal with any money is I'm going to show you how to add regular three-digit numbers together, uh, which you'll find very similar to what we've done before. And once we know how to add three digits together, then extending it to adding up money um, actually is not going to be hard at all. So right now let's just focus on learning how to add these three digit numbers together and uh, we're going to do it as always from left to right so you avoid the need to borrow and carry digits over and trying to juggle all that stuff in your head. We're going to do it the same exact way that we did in the last lesson. So what we're going to do is work first in the leftmost column, topmost number, which in this case is one, uh, the one right here. Now one thing I want to tell you is uh, when you have a three-digit number, much like we did for the two-digit numbers, don't forget that 142 here is really the number 100 plus 40 plus 2. This is what makes up the number 142. And so likewise, the number 212 is really 200 plus this digit right here, this 1 represents 10, plus the 1's digit represents 2. Now again, we, we know this from when we first learned numbers, but it's not something we really deal with every day, breaking these numbers up, but the way we're going to add the numbers together is, is we're going to use this. So we'll start in the upper left corner with the number one, which don't think of as a number one, think of this as a, a, a placeholder for the value 100. So we're going to start mentally in our head, and I'll write it down the first time to kind of remind you what we're doing here, um, but after this we won't be writing so many things down. So we'll start here, Mentally in our head, we're going to keep track of the total as we go. So we're going to start with the value of 100 because that's where we're starting and we're going to work down. So 100 plus this 200 uh, is going to give us 300. So I'm going to keep track of the new subtotal as 300. So now we're at 300. Now we move up to this column. 300 plus the 4. Of course, it's not a 4. It's really value of 40. So 300 plus 40 is 340. Then we move down, 340 plus this value here, which represents 10, is going to give us 350. And then now we move up here, 350 plus 2 is 352. And then finally we go down here, 352 plus 2 is 354. And this is the answer, so you would write it down as 350. Four. So really, you know, in this particular example, and I, I chose this on purpose, where there really is no borrowing going on, so you could kind of add this column to column without too much difficulty in your head. But when you're doing this technique, what you need to realize is that when you begin to get into bigger numbers where you start to carry, then uh, doing it in your, in your head this way is going to save you a lot of time and effort and also getting into longer lists of numbers. So this is only two numbers added together, but if you start adding three and four numbers together, it's going to be a lot easier. So in the future problems, I'm not going to write any of this stuff down. All we're going to do is start in the upper left and keep track of the new total, just like we did in the last section. So you don't want to use the word plus in your head. You don't want to slow your brain down saying, you know, 100 plus 200 is 300. You want to keep track of the new total. So if we were going to do this without writing anything down, it would be like this. 100, 300, 340, 350, 352, 354, 354 is our answer. Okay, here's our next problem. So we have 208 plus 473. It's a problem that a lot of us, if we had to add together, we would just give up trying to do it in our head. Um, notice if we did start from the right over here, the 8 plus the 3, we would end up having to carry a 1 and have to juggle that in our head, but let's not do that. Let's start in the leftmost digit with this 2, which really represents 200. So going forward, we would have 200, 600, because the 2 plus the 4 gives us a new total of 600. Going up here, again, we'd still have 600 because we're adding just the value of 0. We move down here. 
670, because the 7 represents value 70. Going up here, 678. And then down here, 681, because 678 plus the value of 3 is 681. So again, a little bit faster without quite so much talking. We have 200, 600, 600, 670, 678, 681. 681. Okay, our next problem is going to be 429 plus 534. Let's begin working up here in the upper left-hand corner. 400, 900, 920, 950, 959, 963. 963. So you see what you're doing is you need to know the value of the placeholder so that you know what to add properly. This is what's going to allow you to avoid borrowing and carrying. Because if you notice here, the 9 plus the 4, if you did it in the traditional way, you would have to write a number here and then you carry a 1. And mentally trying to carry digits and then add and then carry an add just gets really difficult, especially if you have a longer list of numbers than this. So again, taking it from the top just a little bit faster without so many words, we have 400, 900, 920, 950, 959, 963. And each step of the way, we're not saying the words plus in our head. We're not cluttering our brain with that. We need to get comfortable with adding these single digit numbers together so that we can just keep track of the new subtotal. And rippling through this way is allowing us to basically handle all of the carrying in a normal, uh, logical fashion rather than going backwards to the right and trying to keep track of it moving to the left. Okay, now here's our first example of three number a uh, triple digit addition, but it's exactly the same thing. You just need to build your practice up to being able to handle more and more numbers. And so let's do that here by starting in the upper left hand corner. 100, 300, 700, 780, 840, 900, 909, 910, 916. So the answer is 916. Now there is a lot of carrying uh, to the next digit if you were, to the next column if you were going to do this the traditional way. So let's do it one more time to give you a little bit of practice with it. Again, just kind of going in maybe a little bit more rapidly and just to kind of let you catch up and make sure you really understand. 100, 300, 700, 780, 840, 900, 909, 910, 916. To me, the most challenging part of this problem is when you get into this middle digit. When you go into, you, you, get, you get to 700, then you get to 780, and then you start have to thinking about 780 plus 60, um, giving you the 840, and then the 840 plus another 60, giving you the 900. And um, really, this is when the complements come into play, really, because up to this point, you have 840 in your head, um, and then you're adding 60. You know that 60 and 40 are complements. That's going to pop you up to 900, and that's where your complements can really help you out. All right, so as promised, we're going to add some money here. Now, the really nice thing about money is, you know, a lot of people are upset about money, especially adding or subtracting, multiplying money, because you have decimal points here. And decimal points and dollar sign symbols really spook a lot of people. But what you need to realize is that when you're adding these things, you can completely ignore the decimal points. And that's why I wanted to do three digit addition first, because if you ignore the dollar sign symbols and ignore these decimal points here, then you can add these numbers exactly as if we, we were just adding them just a minute ago. And then at the very end of your calculation, you can stick a decimal point back in the answer and get money back as an answer. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to com completely ignore the decimal point and add these numbers up. So pretend this is 262 and pretend this is 634. So thinking of it that way, let's start up here and go with 200, 800, 860, 890, 892, 896. So we have 800, 
and 96. Now that's what we would have if we didn't have any decimal points and no dollar signs. So you might ask, well, what do you do here? Well, when you get to the end of an addition problem with money, all you do is you stick the decimal point two places from the end of the answer because you have to have two digits for your cents. That's it. You just stick a decimal point there, stick a dollar sign in front. This is the answer, $8.96. Now, you can keep this in your head with dollars and cents, and that works fine, but I prefer to just sort of ignore them and then work the problem like you already know how, and how you've practiced working it, and then at the end, you can stick your decimal point in here and be on your merry way. Okay, so here's our next problem. We have $6.36 plus $3.45, and again, uh, let's don't worry about the dollars and cents. Pretend you don't see any dollar signs here and pretend you do not see any decimals here. Just add them as if this was 636 plus 345 and then we'll deal with the decimal at the end. So starting with here we have 600, 900, 930, 970, 976, 981. So 981, and at the end of the problem, all you do when you're adding these, these uh, money problems is stick a decimal point two digits off from the end, so you have $9.81. Okay, so that's it. So let's take it a little bit faster. 600, 900, 930, 970, 976, 981, $9.81. All right, here's our final problem, and as promised, this was what was introduced in the very beginning of this section. We're going to add together $2.47 plus $1.35 plus $6.82. We're going to add together these three numbers. So again, completely ignore that you have dollar sign symbols and completely ignore that you have decimals here. We're going to read this as 247 plus 135 plus 682. We're going to do it exactly like we did before. Starting with this digit, we have 200, 300, 900, 940, 970, 1050, 1057, 1062, 1064. So 1064. 1064. And again, we have 1064, but at the end of this, all we do is we take a decimal point and we stick it two digits from the end, stick a dollar sign out there. We have $10.64, and that's the answer. So let's go through it one more time, a little bit faster, give you a little bit of practice, starting up here. 200, 300. 900, 940, 970, 1050, 1057, 1062, 1064, 1064, ten dollars sixty four cents and that is how you add up money uh, in terms of mental arithmetic it's best to just avoid the decimal points completely until the end of the problem and that way you're not learning a new skill you see a lot of times in math people think you have all these different skills to learn in reality there's not that many skills it's just that you need to know how everything fits together in this case we're going to completely ignore these decimals and add these numbers up normally so you don't have to learn anything new at the end you stick a decimal point in the answer uh, and there you go. My name's Jason. I hope you've learned something from this section. Practice these things. Get a, get a piece of paper out. Write a few problems down for yourself. Mentally practice. As you work with this, you'll find that you'll be able to handle larger and larger numbers and longer and longer lists of numbers. And getting to the point where you can add three, four, five of these numbers together is really just a point of practice. Anybody can do it with enough practice and enough patience.